and sound um, this video is about San Marcos the the bottom glass boat this catered the history of the boat and the history of this lake managed by the University of Texas um, when I was there I was so amazed and uh, mesmerized by the by the history about it uh, I fell in love to the to the little county of San Marcos because of um, I love the way they educate people and uh, the kids as well um, So a gray chest here. So where the heck did that come from? It wasn't there yesterday. And we had like a cord going into your. What's that? What is that going on there? <laughs> it's her bag. I'm charging. Oh, a battery backup. She has battery yeah. backup. Isn't that cool? Well, 350 years old. This tree got struck by lightning. So guys, the rest of that is please listen this video and hopefully I'm, I I know it's quite boring, there, but um, if there, you're more on interested in this kind of uh, topic, I'm sure you're gonna love it. Um, just try to open up, open your mind, and and hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Otherwise, just have fun. The views is fun. It's nice. There's a lot of beautiful things out there. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out and supporting us. You want to sit right on the end here? Okay. All right. There we go. Can I get two of y'all to move on to this side? Yes, ma'am. So we don't rock the boat. Yes, ma'am. Thanks. I'm going to rock the boats in my life. Yeah, that's a bit of a little easier to see when it's nice. All right, ladies. That's pretty cool. All right. Welcome aboard, everyone. My name's Emma. I'm your boat captain for today. How are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good. So how many of y'all have been here before? Or maybe Ocarina Springs? Okay, welcome back. Welcome to those who are new. We're going to see why it's called Spring Lake. We're going to see some high pressure springs to start off with, and then we're starting to see some low pressure springs. So we get all of our water from the Edwards Aquifer, which is a giant underground cave. It starts in Austin and it spans all the way down to San Antonio. We provide water for over 2 million people here in Central Texas. So all of that big underground cave system. It's made up of limestone rock. So all of the water here that are next to springs, you're going to see some white patches. Those white patches are actually going to be the exposed limestone rock from the aquifer. So in the 50s, this place used to be Ocarina Springs theme park. That's why you'll see a bunch of old poles and old concrete along the sides of the lake here. That's where they had a bunch of their attractions. However, Texas State took over in 1994. And once they started to enforce the Endangered Species Act, they took out all those flood damage buildings and just kept the glass bottom boats here because we do have eight endangered species, which is why this lake here is environmentally sensitive. We want to make sure that those endangered species are well kept. This boat here is actually our oldest boat, believe it or not, has been completely refurbished. The mm -hmm. dates and the size of the boats are in there first put out in the water, so we're on 1945 right now. So the boats have been out for about 80 years. See the garfish right there? Wow. Did you see him? Yeah. You see the garfish? Yeah. Like an alligator? Yeah. Spotted gar, you'll see a bunch for like a week, and then you won't see them again for like two months. Wow. <laughs> but even though they are the second apex predator here, the top predator, they're very shy. I don't know why. But the sunfish, the perch, all those other fish like to follow the boats because it chops up a bunch of algae that they like to eat. So this is our first high pressured spring that we're over. We call this one Crater Bottom. It's about eight to 10 feet deep underwater there. Right where that lifted up rock is, you'll be able to see some rapid movement and that limestone rock getting kicked around. That's where the spring is. The lake temperature here stays 72 degrees constant because of the aquifer. 
So whenever we had that massive uh, winter storm in February last year, or this year technically, I guess, uh, the lake was actually steaming because it was so much hotter than the surrounding area. So anytime it gets less than 45 degrees Fahrenheit, the lake will steam and it's a very cool sight to see. The University of Texas really is looking forward and focus on the nature and what would be the possible output and when you put on something into the lake and taking care of all you know when you do all the the inputs of any kind of I mean experiments that you could do in that itself it's mesmerized me because I learned a lot during this trip it Though it's a very short time of trip, um, it was we were just there for bam 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 for just a couple of hours, just for us to you know to to, to hop on this boat, and um, as you can see, I, I I don't want to do more talking on it because um it's the the tour guide who do a lot of talkings and you know she knows more than me. Um, first this 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 bottom glass boat is is not free of course you have to pay the admission pays which which is for adult is roughly ten dollars eight dollars from eight to twelve years old and un under three years old is um, for free and eight dollars for for seniors and where that money goes well it goes to you know to to help and facilitate the the lake to maintain the maintenance and the clean the cleanliness of the, the 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 area of the lake itself it was amazing guys it's a, a war to be set all the way from brazil they migrate because they dive up to 25 miles an hour underwater they're super cool they catch fish and their necks will actually expand the size of the fish they have a little hug on the beak there so they can catch their prey and they there's a couple of turtles out on that tree right there there's not too many since Oh, yeah, turtle they're... population here in Texas. We have five turtle species, the Texas River Cooter. Those have the yellow stripes on the sides of their heads. The musk turtle, which is my favorite. They only get about as big as an avocado or the size of your palm. The soft shell turtle, the common snapping turtle, which is actually the apex predator, like I said earlier. And then the soft shell turtle. Here's an example of the American eel burrow that I was talking about. It's all very murky underwater there where that sunfish is hanging out. I've never seen an eel here. Uh, a couple of my coworkers have, and some people on the boat ride too. We do have an American eel in the aquarium. Her name is Rosie. They're more snake-like. Um, she, she's not that big. Used as a fish to swim. So instead, what they'll do is they'll use these low-pressure springs, kind of like. So all these trees have been underwater. Those dammed up in 1849 by Edward Burleson, who wanted to power his grist mill. After it got damped up, all the trees that were on the riverbank collapsed in and they're slowly turning into limestone rock. But I haven't decomposed just yet, just because we have such a high concentration of minerals in here. It will take them another 250 years before they're fully limestone rock though. But this rocky terrain that we're going through is what we call the old river bed. The old river was as wide as this boat is long, so you could jump from one end to the other. It filled up in just a single day, creating Spring Lake. It said that if you were to drain all the water in this lake in just 12 hours, the springs would actually refill it back up. So every single time I got a lot of stuff underwater just because it would have been harder to take out, just because it became a part of the ecosystem after so many years being underwater there. But straight ahead, there's going to be some cormorants and there's also going to be some tiny little ducks. Those are my favorite here. 
So there's some high pressured springs and some low pressured springs. Red where that lifts up. All right, so we're all right, so we're making our way back onto the dock here. And right with us, we are nonprofit, so buy all my boat tickets, it keeps us afloat. I did have to just throw one pun in there, I'm sorry. <laughs> so my coworker Logan here, he'll tie us up really fast. And then we'll open up the gate and y'all are good to head on out. If y'all want to check out the wetlands boardwalk that I was talking about, you'll just have to take a right on this gravel path and you'll walk for about a minute, 30 seconds, and it'll fork off to the left. Take the left side, you're going to see a wetlands shack that will be closed, so you'll just have to walk down like 15 seconds more and go through the back side. Um, if you're not really into this kind of sections, and I'm sure you're going to get bored, but um, just open up, be open-minded to this and listen up you know the color of the lake how this um, become greenish and how do you maintain the cleanliness university of texas focus on how to maintain the cleanliness at the same time people can have fun by you know do scuba diving texas in this central texas where i uh, where i was in um, there's an ocean it's more on river and and lake so people has to do to whatever could make them do the accessible um, activities, especially summer. Outdoor activities, they have canoeing on the summer and they have scuba diving and, uh, and they dive in the water in the lake like this. And But this area here, the divers are the professors, the teachers to, and, and some students who who study about the algae, study about the plants underwater, fishes and um, the living things that grow on the water. So this, the, 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 the middle shuttle, um, um, especially the Texas University, this is their, their, their place to study, to experiment all the living things that lives underwater. And see you again in my next vlog. Bye. Thank you for watching. Legal Matters begins. Sign out. Stay safe.